Because you, uh, you want to go there with them, the ones, the king, blah, 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 blah. Nah, 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 You didn't go to war, right? So you're on the roof. I don't go to war, I'm on the roof, right? But I ain't going to court. Where you at? <laughs> if you hold the court every day, you've got to, you have court, you've got to do court. Did you think that all those people that had uh, problems and issues were just standing there waiting for you? You think that, well, I don't want to go to court because I don't have to listen to their grievances. But what you should realize is that it's the ones that got grievances, the ones that complain, have the biggest mouth. Why? Because as I, here's the thing. If you are a quiet person, you are very rarely going to complain about a situation, even in a restaurant. Go to a restaurant with Jamie, right? And it's about, I'm very nice about how I do it. But something, let's say the food is completely cold and it's hard, right? And, I, and the burger is hard, I'm going to have to say something. <laughs> And you keep the, the server kicking me on the table? I'm gonna have to ask a question. I'm asking a question. I'm the one that cares. To, you don't realize that I'm the one that cares more about every, what everybody's eating and the temperature of their food and whether they're happy. I care more about it than they do. You never know it though. I was out with four other people today. You would never know it. I care more about what they eat than they do. I can tell you now what they ate. I bet you they can't. They can't. I care. So I grieve, right? Is David, uh, you think about airing grievances. Uh, they come, they take the time to come to the court, king's court to, to the air their grievances. Uh, and don't think that once they get a fair answer from you, they go home and tell their friends. Uh, when you actually ask them and listen to one, he said, I can't do anything about it, but if I was king, this is how I would handle it. Guaranteed all they heard was, I would handle it. So they go in home thinking, I gotta make that happen. We gotta make that happen. They can't have to come to court, right? So they can grieve, right, before you. Even if you can't do anything, I always like that he just hear um, somebody say, I care about you. They turn around and they leave. And what they do is they tell everybody. I'm always talking about, I talk about my pastors all the time. I saw my pastor David. I tell Jehovah's Witness person about Pastor David. Down the street, I'm talking to her. I tell about Pastor David. And my, my pastor. I, I thought, come on. I got a big mouth. Get me on your team. I promise you, you'll be happy because I got a big mouth. Alienating me because I'm grieving. Alienating me because I'm bringing grievance before you. It's not the smartest thing to do. Because if you get me happy, if you keep me happy, I will make things great for you. Uh, I will always defend you. Absalom went to go meet with the grievers, the people that actually care enough to come to court. He went to go meet with the grievers. So Absalom got his followers, a, 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 a whole lot, a whole bunch of grievers. And grievers got big mouths, right? Grievers bring their friends. Grievers always bring their friends. Grievers never come alone. They come, they come to complain alone, but then when they go, they got, they got, I got a, I got a, I got a, 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 a customer's last there. Right? We're going to stand together. We got something that we have to do. When I got something I got to do, right? I'm a griever by myself. When I have something I do, even in my grief thing, I'm taking you with me. Because I'm a griever. The people have that finger on the pulse of this country. Watch your mouth and keep your grievers close. But David didn't do it. What David did was when the grievers came, you don't realize where your uh, kingdom comes from. Your kingdom is always made up of supporters. And when, uh, when the grievers came, you ignored them. So when Solomon said, I can't help you, right? Because of the fact that I'm not the king, but if I were king, then here's what I would do, right? He's taking your kingdom, right? By taking your grievers from you.
There's one event, though, that we missed. One event that seems very small, but it's very large, right? It seems so small. It seems like, a, it seems like nothing. It seems like a, 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 a just a, a passable thing. But we're missing it. What is it? I'll tell you right now, it's the, it's the barley. It's the, the barley. The barley. The barley. I was at a um, restaurant in Jersey with, I'm like, wow, I'm not hanging out in restaurants, but I was at a restaurant in Jersey with a friend, and they brought out bread. It was in a basket, it was a bunch. It was like, what, like they, they bring out bread in a basket, it's like cut up or whatever, and so there's white bread in there, and there's the, uh, whatever, it was like maybe wheat bread, I don't know, but there's this dark bread, and I said, what is that? I have to know why because of the fact that when I was younger I taste the pumpernickel bread and I do not like pumpernickel bread at all I don't like rye bread at all so this dark bread gotta go they said no that's not uh, pumpernickel that's not rye what it is is barley bread it's barley Probably as long as the, that's not Pumper Nickel, but it would, if it had a name like that, it would be Pumper Penny. Because barley, barley was uh, po' man's bread. Po', po' man's bread. If you po', you got barley. You ain't got no, uh, I, I have Peters in the kitchen. I don't know if they eat bread in white. Peters. I eat bread from out people I can just have a sandwich with. Honey in them, but I, I'm, here, I'm not buying no bread to keep in my house. Wow, I, I could buy Peters. More expensive? Yes. Better for you? Yes. <laughs> More dietary fiber? Yes. That's why. It's not my penis, man. And if pump a nickel was the pump a nickel, then pump, uh, the barley would be the pump a penny. Wouldn't it? No, it's cheap. And barley is cheap, right? It's cheap to make. I think they make it with dirt. I don't know. But it, mm, it's cold man's bread. But it is bread, nonetheless. I don't care if it only costs a penny, give it to me. I will eat it right now. I didn't, I, I'm not asking the bread and doing an interview with it and asking the bread how much it will charge me to eat it or how much a, 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 the person that made it charged it to be what it was. I just want to know that it's, it's, it's wrong. Bread. The funny thing is, broadly, right? Because rye and pumpkin nickel, I think they actually taste a little bit, uh, they, they cost a little bit more, but that they taste different as well. But, barley is just as dark a uh, bread, right? And barley tastes like white bread to me. It tastes, it, I remember it just tastes, I, I taste, I'm like, mm, this is pretty good. Barley bread. And it's cheap. The rest of them, they have a basket of bread, and that thing is like two pieces of barley in there. It's like maybe ten pieces of bread. So the problem was obviously to add a little bit of color to it for somebody probably that did, did not want to eat white bread also to serve as sort of a garnish. Because if you got 10 pieces of bread in there and they're all white and it's you, like one or two pieces of barley that tell me that the barley weren't, uh, uh, um, they weren't supposed to overpopulate the thing. It was just there. The barley would just make a statement. It was never the, 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 it was never the conversation piece of bread. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. The barley was just thrown in there. I thought about that. Said, how, how many people feel thrown into where they are? Better yet, how, how, how many of you can agree with me that Absalom, Amnon, and uh, um, 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 Adonijah felt thrown in? To this situation. Thrown in. Way I'm thrown in. I feel that way often when I go to church. I look at the pet families there and I'm like, God, what were, what were you doing? So you just, you, you just threw me in with them? Couldn't you have put me with them? 
I was the bondy of the situation. I was thrown in. I was placed there. I tell you how I know because I have no communication with um, the people that I call family. I have no communication with them at all. So I said, I have, I have just been thrown there. I mean, I had no purpose being there. They don't want me, and I'm not around them. As a matter of fact, I was directed that by uh, many people to not have anything to do with them again. Those people want me dead. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not mad about it. I never get mad about it. I'm never mad about them by, by, by the way they treat me or how they view me. What makes me nervous is the fact that uh, I was just given over like barley something. That's why she beat me. She looked at my sisters and saw white bread. She looked at me and saw barley. I was different. I'm an introvert and that made me different. And I didn't realize that the introvert comes out of me. It comes off my skin. Honey said, she said, Jamie, you do your love. You do your art. You don't want nobody telling you nothing. I said, wait, what? She's like, yeah, she's like, a lot of the stuff you do, you, it puts you in an isolation state. She's like, you show people stuff and you share with them, but you don't want people telling you stuff. And I said, wait a minute, that's not me. And I thought to myself, say, yes, it is. I, I, I don't mind people giving feedback. I just got to be the right person. <laughs> it's not because I know something about it. I'm not, it's Thomas Trainer. He's guiding me through setting up my web pages and getting my stuff together for art. It's got to be somebody that knows something about it. I'm not going to go to, to, to I'm just not, I'm not going to go to um, Haley Triggers. She's two or three. I'm not going to go to her to ask questions about the Bible. I mean, I, 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 I listen to her. She's like, I listen to her today. Troy gave me an amazing word after the word was given. Amazing word. I listen to Isaac, uh, Isaac. I listen to Levi. I listen to Jonathan. I listen to all of them. Sophia, I listen to everybody. I say all the kids. But I'm not taking advice from a two year old. A 13 year old. I'm not saying advice. But someone I know I should be advising. I pray for those people. But God said, stay away from them. I said, yes, Lord. Bye. Because I never fit in with them. Being at home, being there, I never fit in with any of them. They put me out of their lives and did things over without me on purpose because I never fit in with them. And now they call themselves doing tough love on me, right? Because if they uh, stay away from me uh, long enough, don't say nothing to me, uh, that, that, then um, they'll have great lives without me and then I'll be, uh, I'll be um, destitute without them. They're waiting for me to become destitute. I know because they never told me. She didn't have to. I grew up with them. How do you love how do you love somebody that's waiting for you to become destitute? That's betting the money when you become destitute. I can't help you with the salvation message. Because you're waiting for me to become destitute. You want me to become destitute, and I'm waiting for you to be at the point where I can speak to you. I'm not asking you to become anything. You're waiting for me, though, to become destitute. We are both waiting. Question is, only one of us is waiting on what God says. I'm not waiting for you to be hurt, King. I'm waiting for you to be at the place when I speak, you don't strike out with words that stab me and make me bleed. I am. And I kept thinking, while I was here, I said, why do people, why do people run from me? Run from me. Why do people, I said, God, why do people run from me? Why are people running from me? And Harley said that. I said, wow, did that see? That's why they run from me. Because I will not. <laughs> I just don't, I don't entertain people that I think are full of nonsense. And 
and you don't know more about what I am looking into than I do, I won't acknowledge you. It's just the way that I'm, I'm made up. I've done it. I had to catch myself a couple of times, right? Because I, I, I've done it and I did not need to be rude. It can come up rude, but I just don't know. I, mean, I, I cannot acknowledge you. Listening to you is a waste of time for me while somebody's walking by that can truly help me. And so I must step away for a moment and start talking to the white bread and walking by me and, and leave you, the barley, alone. Isn't that crazy? Isn't it crazy that we are not just known as barley, but we're seen as barley in different situations, right? And uh, depending on which situation I'm in, I'm seen as barley. And there are times when I'm looked on and looked upon as barley when I am not barley at all. People don't get it. What I am is Christ driven. Absalom. Absalom is gonna Absalom put, put a fire to Joe Ab's uh, barley field, and here's the thing. I said he's not the worst person in the story. Because everybody is re the, a sword is swing, and a sword only swings in the house uh, when people start acting on responses. Nobody's talking to the acting on responses. That's why go get sick, go get your abba. The servant said he can't come. That's why I said go get your abba. The servant said he can't come. The servant said, uh, he, I'm gonna say go get your abba. He said that he can't come. He said, okay, let's fill this next to mine, burn it. When you see bread burning, you ought to keep your eyes open about it. I remember there's one main story in the Bible, right? Just off the top of my head, where bread was burning. Can you, uh, can you remember what it was? Samson. He set a fire to the fox's tails and uh, pushed them to run through the grain that belonged to the Philistines. Now here's the thing. He put them through the grain that belonged to the Philistines. He didn't bring them over to grain that was shared, right, by me and the Israelites and the Philistines. He didn't do that. Fire spreads quickly, but he sent them through the Philistines' brain, and that's why a, a, a life was required in it. Because when you burn bread, you are burning me, aren't you? Right? We are bread, right? We are broken. Jesus took the bread over seven and said, and he broke it. He, uh, he prayed over it, and he broke it, and then he blessed it, and then he gave it to people, right? Uh, we are considered bread. Uh, Jesus is the bread of life, right? So if he's bread, I am bread. So when bread is broken, that's flesh broken, right? If, if I'm getting my flesh broken, Again, right? There's no reason why somebody should come behind me and burn it. I'm going to be broken, not burnt. She's broke the bread. Blessed it. Handed it out, right? But, but we have uh, Samson sending these foxes with uh, fiery tails through to burn. He tied the tails together. That really upset me. What's our cartoon picture of what actually happened? I still cried. That really upset me. He tied the foxes' tails together and set, the, and set their uh, tails on fire. <laughs> this was a break bread, not burn it. If I say something to you, right, it's because I love you, right, but if you get burnt by what I said, then I'm going to come back and apologize to you, right, because I am supposed to break you, not burn you. It's beautiful, right? Because you're talking. My foot started swelling up and I had to keep getting up out the chair at Panera. And we were one of those high tables that keep getting up out the chair because my foot kept swelling up. That's the foot with the screw in it. It's the way my foot reacts to, hey, I don't like what you're doing right now. My foot was broken. But the only place I have a scar is this tiny little scar next to my ankle. Where that man shoved that screw into my foot. <laughs> It's the only place where I have a scar. I have a scar. But that was a scar left from surgery. 
that man cut me open and put a, a screw in me. That was from the, that was left from surgery. That was not left from the break. When you, have, when you break a bone, when you are broken, you do not, you are not scarred. There are no visible scars on you to show uh, where, uh, where you are broken by God. And because he always puts you back together perfectly. When he sends somebody to break you, he does not send somebody to break you and then cause you scarring. It doesn't happen. But here's the thing. Well, uh, if God breaks me, that's one thing. Because God, uh, Jesus will break that bread in a minute. But doesn't the Bible tell us that, tell us that the enemy has the fiery darts that, uh, that he shoots at us that are meant to burn us. I can't talk to her no more because the last conversation, full conversation I had from her, spiritually I felt there were darts being shot at me and I was being shot and burnt. Shot and shot and I felt it. Spiritually. The enemy, the enemy will go back. He like, it's a fiery dart, right? The enemy will burn me, but Jesus breaks me. They both wound me, right? And it's all used by God. It's all usable by God. It's all used by God, right? But Jesus breaks me. The enemy burns me. And the one thing, the way that I know why it's, uh, uh, well, what's going to happen or who did it is by the fact that there's no scar. Jesus breaks the enemy burns. God never scars. God will use it all. But God only breaks you. He will never burn you. Because burning leaves a scar. I believe he wants you to toss things and be able to forgive and throw things to the side, right? So even with uh, uh, dealing with my family, I, I, don't, I, I don't even think about it. Am I angry? No. Right now I have everything that I've ever wanted. Do I have it to the level that I've wanted it? No. But I have exactly what I need. To the, to the God level. Because I was the outcast. I was the stupid one. She called me stupid every day. And now I'm here, right, doing this thing by myself, right? I'm now the white bread and they become the barley. Let's, let's sit back. Here, here it is. Here it is right here. Here it is right here. I'm in the same pot as you in some continuously trying to change myself uh, and make myself over for you because lowest common reason why I was stupid every day. So, Jen, you're just so selfish and stupid. You're so inconsiderate and stupid. I mean, every day I, if I was trying to change myself every single day. Now I'm here, right? I don't change myself. I give myself over to God. See, I was the outcast there, right? They were the whites and I was just the outcast. I was the dross. They did not want me and I could feel it, right? I knew it plus they told me they want to kill me every day now that I'm here I'm the white bread for my life I'm the white bread and they're the problem I don't need them right I don't need to have them over here right you don't need that people that want to kill you walking alongside you that's an extra burden right so you don't need to have people that want to kill you walking alongside you you can be the white bread and they could just be the barley for them I don't know how it works with them I'm looking for healing. Because when I was with them, they burnt me. They didn't break me. Here we go. Here we go. Not so safe. Pastor David broke me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. But there are no scars. Those people burnt me. And there are scars. That I couldn't move forward in art in certain things and doing do certain types of art pieces because I could not let them go. They were like a constant reminder of themselves to me. And I could not move forward in what God was having me do even artistically, right? Because I could not let them go. There's a burning, but also a beckoning. Come back to us so we can burn you again. Absolutely not. That's why you broke me? Yes. Breaking does not, does not come without somebody caring for you. There's a breaking that will come, right? When you have people around you that are concerned about you. Yes. But God breaks and then he burns. There's biblical proof of that.
Because when I see burning bread, I'm, I immediately think burning flesh. I think burning people. I see burning bread. I see t- I, 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 if, you, if you think about it, the war stopped then with Samson. He had gotten upset over the riddle. Uh, they, they, he beat the clothes off 30 men and gave it to them. They turned around and did something to him. He did something else. And they took the, the, the daughter and the father. Or he burnt the, the field and they, then they killed the daughter and the father. I don't know. 